Today, we're gonna review the TYM BH150 backhoe, which we've got right here, paired on a TYM 2515H tractor uh, that it is on right now. So we've been testing this out for about two months, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you some digging, we're gonna work with a little bit, and then I'm just gonna tell you my thoughts about this backhoe. So I've got this on a TYM 2515H. It'll also work on TYM 2515R, but this particular backhoe will work on several different types of TYM tractors as well as I believe some Branson tractors. Uh, take a look down in the comments and description if you know exactly what tractors uh, this TYM BH150 backhoe will work on, but it is several tractors. Now it's important to know for this backhoe to work on your tractor, you will need a frame underneath the tractor uh, and that's how this connects. It's got a subframe on the backhoe itself that connects to uh, some frame points underneath the actual tractor itself and then it connects with the uh, top link on the back of the tractor so you've got to remove the three-point arms uh, in order to get this on and then you can just put those back on uh, whenever you want to use them it takes about uh, 15 minutes to probably put the backhoe back on or take it off uh, to go either way so you can take off the backhoe put a three-point uh, hitch on there, run your PTO implements, whatever you need. Or uh, if you wanna take that off, you can put the backhoe on here. So let's get started with some digging and show you how this thing works. Here, we're just going through the paces with some of this, showing you what it looks like here. Um, we've got the arm going left and right. And you can see this is where I keep the tractor. So this is actually a, uh, portable garage that we've got the tractor in right now which keeps the rain off of it keeps the snow off of it and the sunlight and then most importantly uh, this keeps that seat dry so if you want to get on it uh, you don't have to worry about getting wet after a rain so it fits right in there with the uh, rocks down and uh, I'd say the rocks with it down is probably about six foot five or so and uh, it slides right underneath there. It's pretty close to that. So I'm just trying to get it out of uh, the little bit of the tight space we've got here uh, and transporting it to where we're going to actually use the tractor. Here, we're just driving over to the field uh, where we're gonna use the backhoe. I've got uh, some stumps that I wanna dig out. So we're gonna back up the tractor to the stumps here. And uh, this is probably about eight to 10 inch pine tree um, that died a couple years ago um, or was cut down a couple years ago. It was clear cut before uh, I was on this piece of land. Uh, it's a shame what they did with it. They could have uh, left some more of the trees and uh, regenerated some of those trees a little bit better. Uh, maybe a select cut rather than a clear cut. But as you can see in the background, um, those are a lot of poplar trees that have regen in the last couple of years. So the first thing that you need to do to get the backhoe operational is put down the arms. And on each side of the backhoe, you've got a lever that is going to put the arms down or the stabilizers uh, so that you're going to be able to use the backhoe. Once you've got the stabilizers in, you're going to need to take the pin out of the backhoe for transport. So I put that pin in while I'm transporting it and it keeps it from moving around and rattling around and then you're ready to go. Now, you, if you've got a pin um, also in the top of it for side to side motion, you wanna make sure that you take that out as well. But I only travel with the one pin. So here we're extending the bucket so that we can start digging. And about where the end of my bucket is, uh, is where that uh, eight to 10 inch pine tree stump is. It might be a little bit bigger. We're just opening up the bucket and showing you all the different functions here of the backhoe. So uh, you've got two main levers and each lever has four functions on it. Uh, so right now I'm on the lever that allows you to open or close the bucket. And then it also allows you to take the arm left or right. So we're just testing it out. Now uh, you can see here, uh, you can lower that main arm and then the secondary arm um, you're going to also be able to then uh, tilt or curl with uh, the other function. And then you've got the uh, bucket functionality to tilt or curl. So there's a total of uh, eight functions, four functions on each lever, and you've got two levers. And then you've got the two additional levers um, for 
uh, lowering and extending those stabilizers. So here what we're doing is we're just starting off with some easy scoops. This is grass that's got um, some sod in it. Uh, there's sand underneath or a sandy loam. And this thing's cutting right through it, no problem. And then there's roots. The only time that we um, run in, in into any resistance is when we've got roots. I would say that in general, this backhoe can cut through probably a two inch root uh, without you even feeling it. It just kind of goes right through there. Uh, just the uplift force or the down force from the bucket is gonna cut through it. Once you get over that size, um, you will start to feel the uh, bucket move and it may take a couple of swings at it or a couple curls to get that root cut. Uh, but over two inches, you can still cut some of those roots. I would say right at about the five inch mark is where the uh, roots are too large to easily just cut through with the bucket in one or two scoops. You have to be a little bit more strategic about it, or maybe you go further away from that root and you try and cut into it. So you can see us uh, pulling some dirt here. Um, we've got full bucketfuls, and, and once again, I'm not the most talented operator in the world. Uh, we're just trying to get you a feel for this uh, piece of equipment. This is not a production level backhoe, and I'm not a production level operator either. However, uh, you know, I've used a backhoe or an excavator or a um, skid steer a couple times when I've had to rent it for different projects. But this is uh, the first time that uh, I've had this backhoe on this tractor. So just getting used to uh, some of the controls and how it works here uh, after using it. Haven't used it in a while. And uh, you can see you can get a full scoop in that 16-inch bucket. So right now we're in that sandy loam, um, which means that you've got some sand and maybe a little bit of a clay in there, but not much clay. It's mostly sand. So this soil is uh, pretty easy to uh, dig through. There's also some maybe river stone or pea stone in here, uh, but for the most part, it's mostly sand. Here we're taking a look at the control pattern as well as a view from the driver's seat of the backhoe itself. So right now I'm just lowering down uh, those two stabilizers. They go down real easy. You can kind of feel when they engage and touch the ground. You've got uh, the two levers here and you can see uh, there's those little logos on there that tell you which uh, lever does what. So we're just uh, taking this uh, left and right right now on the arm, swinging it. And there are some bumpers uh, on the left and right of the arm. Uh, down at the bottom to protect it from uh, hitting the uh, machine and then you can see we can lower that main arm right there that cylinder extends and contracts so that is what that first lever is uh, doing right there and we're just uh, toying around with it there to uh, get it moving now we're on to the second lever here let's see what happens with that uh, if we move this one we can uh, open and close the bucket there you can see what's going on uh, and then we're going to move over here in a second to the other function. But uh, you can see this goes pretty smooth when you're operating it. Uh, it feels smooth. There's a little bit of a uh, jiggle or kickback uh, when you stop. But overall, it, it seems pretty smooth when you're operating it. So that's the second function there uh, is that uh, last joint on the arm moving that one uh, there. And you can see that cylinder contract and extend uh, as we do it. So now let's put all those movements together. And there you go, we uh, pull the arm in as well as contract uh, that bucket or curl that bucket and we can do a little bit of those actions uh, all at once. And now we're gonna move left or right uh, and uh, offload that bucket or we're gonna offload it right here. So we're gonna move on and show you a little bit more of how we uh, dug this stump out and get it removed. So my strategy for getting this uh, stump out is I'm just going to uh, excavate on each side of the stump. So I'm gonna go on, I'm on the right side of the stump right now, and then I'm gonna go over to the left side of the stump. And what I end up doing is cutting a trench on both sides of the stump, and then I back up eventually and uh, cut some more on the front of the stump uh, that's facing the uh, tractor. And that seemed to work pretty well. Where it gets hung up eventually is there's a couple big roots 
and uh, I am able to chop through those or break through those. And then once we are able to get those uh, broken through, we're able to actually get this stump out with no problems. So uh, on video, it may not look like that big of a stump, but uh, once I got it out and uh, just tried even moving around by hand, I mean, it's, it's over 100 pounds, uh, the stump and the root ball and everything that's there. So it's actually pretty significant and, and larger than it probably looks on camera. So in using this backhoe, it's actually uh, more capable than I guess I would have expected it. And then we're just using it here to kind of like crunch some trees and brush that are right near the stump just to get those down and out of the way. These are probably, I don't know, an inch to two inch. Uh, they might be popples. Uh, it might be some kind of other uh, tree or shrub. Uh, it's, you know, past the season where we've got leaves on trees, so it's kind of hard to tell what they are without really looking into it. And I'm just trying to get them down because they're basically growing out the side of this pine tree and kind of obstructing what we want to get at. So right now you can see uh, we've been digging for a couple minutes here. I've started on that uh, right side of the stump. Now I'm going to go over to the left side of the stump and uh, start digging and digging that other trench. All in all, it takes me probably like 15 minutes to get this stump out. Uh, we'll see, but that's about what it felt like. So in order for this backhoe to operate, uh, you do need to connect it to the rear hydraulics on the TYM 2515. And while I'm operating it right here, I'm operating it at, I think, about 1,500 RPM, so it just seems like a nice uh, speed to be going with the engine. Plenty of power. Uh, I could definitely turn it up more. Uh, 1,500 RPMs is, uh, I don't know, probably a third to 40% up uh, the idle range or the throttle range. Here you can see inside the hole and how far we've gone so far. That stumps right in the middle and then uh, we're just digging through it. You can see a couple of those big roots there that have been cut through with the bucket and that's a 16 inch bucket. So use that uh, for size comparison. These are fairly large roots and I think that's what's important to note. So uh, with this particular backhoe, you can get different size buckets um, I think there's a 12 inch, uh, maybe a 10 inch or 8 inch, and then there's the 16 inch. Uh, I'm glad with the 16 inch size selection. Uh, that's really good for this size unit. I never felt like the bucket's too big, but if you get something smaller, you're going to feel like your scoops are pretty small. I wouldn't want anything smaller than this bucket unless I was doing something specific like a trench that I only wanted 16 inches wide. I think going with a bigger bucket on this piece of equipment is a good idea. You're not going to feel like uh, you're underpowered to fill up that 16 foot, uh, inch bucket. It's been perfectly fine with the amount of power, but it still moves a lot of dirt fairly quickly. And I think that's the advantage of it. You're going to get your jobs done quicker if you've got this 16 inch bucket. Now, uh, your situation may differ if you've got heavier soil or you've got a lot of rock in your soil or something like that uh, creates issues for you. But in a sandy soil or sandy loam, um, the bigger bucket seems to be the way to go. So the BH150 uh, TYM backhoe, that is an option that you can get with the TYM 2515H or the TYM uh, 2515R which are also formally known as uh, Branson tractors. So TYM, uh, Branson have merged, but uh, the TYM 2515 lineup and the uh, 15 lineup of uh, TYM tractors are basically Branson tractors that have been rebranded. And uh, if you want to get the backhoe, uh, just make sure that uh, when you are ordering the tractor uh, or you're getting it from the dealer, you let them know that you're thinking about a backhoe so that they will include that rear hydraulic loop on the back of the tractor. Um, because to get the backhoe to work, you've got to have that rear hydraulic loop. And then it has its own subframe on the backhoe that you basically back over uh, to connect to the tractor. Uh, pretty easy to get that subframe connected. And then it connects uh, with, there's a little top link uh, that you connect as well to the tractor. Once you've got the backhoe on the tractor, it feels really stable, like it's all one piece. And if you look at the frame on this uh, backhoe, uh, it is actually very beefy. Everything feels well made um, and well built and looks well made and uh, well built. 
there's a ton of grease zerks on this, so you definitely want to make sure that you have everything greased up on the backhoe uh, to make sure that you've got it working right and that you're giving it the proper lubrication. You can see the backhoe has enough power to actually like kind of move the tractor um, with the digging force. So you could actually lift up the rear end of the tractor with the backhoe uh, if you wanted. I don't know if that's recommended or not. I, I wouldn't do it, but um, you definitely have the force. And you can see it when you are uh, using it, how much force you have to both uh, curl and push with the backhoe, and then as well as go side to side. Um, you just want to maintain your typical precautions when you're using this to make the uh, equipment last uh, as long as possible and not abuse it. And uh, so that's what we're trying to do. And uh, I think trying to go side and side, uh, you can see how those cylinders are typically a little bit smaller than the up-down cylinders. So in my opinion, you want to limit uh, how much force you've got going side to side uh, just because those cylinders are smaller than the uh, lifting cylinders which you've got on the arm itself. So when looking at this uh, TYM backhoe, I initially had a lot of concerns. Um, you know, it's a large investment to make and is it gonna be a toy or is it gonna be a useful tool that I can get a lot done with and will I have projects to do with it, um, right? Because you are making a significant investment in this and is it just a large shovel? Or is it actually going to be something that saves you labor and saves you time? And is it going to be worth the ROI versus, let's say, renting a piece of equipment? So I've rented a fair number of different pieces of equipment in the past or uh, borrowed them or uh, operated different pieces of equipment. And there's no doubt that a mini excavator is going to be faster than this. However, uh, to rent a mini excavator, a lot of times what I found is that you'll look at a price that's advertised for, let's say, $350, day, uh, $350 per day to rent a mini excavator. Well, then you have the additional cost of either getting it delivered, uh, which a lot of times around me is about $200 to $250 to get it delivered. And then uh, if you want to do it yourself, you will have to pay for the trailer which is uh, about $100. Sometimes they give you a discount on the trailer. So uh, all of a sudden it's $350 to run a mini excavator and then you're paying at minimum $100 uh, for the trailer. So $450 as well as uh, the time to get it on the trailer, the time to get it off the trailer, and then the gas to get it from point A to point B. So let's just say all in um, your time and everything included, um, you're looking at like $500 to $600 uh, per day to rent a mini excavator. And that probably doesn't include insurance. Uh, different places have different insurance agreements uh, or different liability agreements where you have to buy some insurance while you rent the mini X uh, and or you're liable for if something breaks to get it fixed. Um, I actually had a place that I rented from one time a uh, tire went out uh, while I was using the trailer that I had rented and they wanted me to pay to get the tire fixed on the trailer which I thought was kind of crazy and so you can see how if a place uh, has that in their agreement you got to look at those rental agreements um, you could be someone that's stuck with a fairly large uh, equipment damage bill or just a wear and tear bill uh, if you don't know what you're doing uh, versus having your own piece of equipment. So let's say it's six hundred dollars uh, per day to rent a mini excavator, uh, kind of in that scenario that we all went through. Um, that means that uh, if you were to rent a mini excavator uh, eleven times, uh, that would cost you approximately what the backhoe costs, which uh, in 2023 I think is right around six to seven thousand dollars. And uh, 10 to 11 times of mini excavator rental or 10 to 11 days of mini excavator rental is about the same as the backhoe. But the difference is, is that with the backhoe, you get to keep that and use it for whatever future projects um, you've got once you've gotten it paid off. So it's not going to be as efficient as a mini excavator. However, it's going to be available to use whenever you want. And if you've got an hour or so worth of work, you're going to be able to do an hour or two worth of work and then move on to your next project.
and you didn't have to deal with all the headache of loading a piece of equipment up, moving a piece of equipment, um, and renting a piece of equipment, and all the time and money and cost associated with that. So I think if you have projects that you know that you're going to be doing over the long term or you have uh, some long-term goals for what you want to do, uh, getting a backhoe that fits on your tractor, um, as long as you know the capabilities of it, uh, can be very useful. So with this, you've got, I think, about six and a half to seven feet of dig depth on the backhoe itself. And uh, in just digging these holes, I probably went three and a half, four feet deep. And it seemed like it went really quick to get that deep. And, uh, you know, I'm just tinkering around with it, trying to get used to it still here. And uh, definitely could go quicker if I was a little bit more polished. And any every time uh, you use it a little bit more, it just becomes a little bit more intuitive and you get an idea of what's going on. So here I just repositioned the tractor because I've got the stump. I've got a trench dug on both the left and right side of the stump. And there's this big root that's coming out of underneath the stump, which is probably six inches in diameter or so. And uh, I'm trying to cut through that or get to a point where I can break it. So now I'm just digging in the front of the stump to kind of expose more of that root so I can get some more leverage on it. And then I'm going to be able to uh, snap it or move it. And I think that's part of it uh, too is you can actually get through bigger stumps than you think if you kind of work around them and use uh, the pieces and roots of the stump to your own advantage uh, to get leverage on the stump to help pull it out. So just use it like a lever, dig up that stump, dig it up a little bit further away, and then you're going to be able to use that backhoe bucket to uh, try and move it around like you can see here. We've got it kind of pinned, and we're moving that around, getting that dirt loose, and uh, eventually this stump will give way once we do this a couple more times. And then we're going to be able to remove the stump here uh, from the hole that we've got it in. So we'll just keep chipping away at the dirt uh, in front of this and on both sides of it to get this uh, root out of here and get this stump out of here. And I think with a backhoe in this uh, TYM BH150 backhoe, the thing about it is that it's such a unique implement and can be used for so many different unique applications and jobs. Here we go. We got that uh, big root out of there. And now this stump is pretty much uh, free. But what I mean by that is that with a backhoe, if you've got some creativity, there's a wide variety of uses and projects that you can use it for versus, let's say, a brush hog. A brush hog is going to clear brush. There's not a lot else you're going to be able to do with a brush hog other than that one specific purpose, where with a backhoe, you really have a lot of different purposes with it. You can remove stumps, you can dig holes, you could dig a little watering hole for livestock, uh, you can put in posts, remove posts, you can help set posts uh, for a pole barn with something like this. There's a lot of different things that you could use a backhoe for that are going to be much more efficient when you're using a backhoe than a shovel, and there's just a lot of different projects that using a backhoe um, can give you exponential returns, I would say, on your time. So I'm moving this stump around, and uh, it's a lot bigger than you think and a lot heavier when I'm moving it around uh, compared to when it was in the actual hole. So we're just going to move that to the side, and we'll take care of that um, some other time. But uh, now we've got the hole. I'm going to fill some of it in uh, with the uh, backhoe itself, but uh, it's going to be way quicker just to, to uh, put the dirt back in with the bucket, but I don't have the bucket on right now. I've got pallet forks. I should have changed it before I drove over here, but uh, that's just how it goes sometimes. So uh, we'll go through in this video basically every function and how it works, but I guess the main question that... Uh, I would ask, or maybe you might be wondering about, is this worth the investment um, with the 25-15H tractor? It's significant to get a backhoe. It's, ex it's expensive compared to the overall cost of the equipment. Um, you can get a TYM 25-15H right around $20,000 if you don't have a whole bunch of extra accessories on it. And then the backhoe is an extra six to $7,000. So it's an expensive piece of equipment when you compare it to the overall cost of the equipment. And uh, in my opinion, is it worth it? 
if you've got the projects for it, I definitely think it's worth it. Uh, and I've been happy so far. It is capable for its size. And I was actually surprised how much dirt you could move uh, with that 16 inch bucket. So one of the things that I can see myself using it for um, is digging some smaller foundations for some outbuildings that I need to uh, dig for. Uh, dig for a septic tank. You could definitely do that with this. It's going to take you a little bit longer, but no problem. Um, and you can use the loader in combination of the backhoe. And I think that's where you really get a lot of value is that you can move a lot of material quickly um, with a combination of a backhoe and a front end loader if you've got the bucket on there so you can do some digging and then just turn around and uh, take that uh, material wherever you need to with the uh, bucket from the uh, front end loader. So that's part of the advantage of a backhoe is that you've only got one engine to maintain but you've got basically a excavator bucket there and then you've got a loader bucket so that you can move a lot of material around uh, like we're talking about in the application of a septic tank where maybe you could use the backhoe to dig you a nice ramp and then use that um, front end loader bucket to move more material quickly out of that. So uh, with that backhoe, you're going to be able to do some nice grading uh, there as well as move material that's stiffer that maybe you can't get with the bucket um, or not beat up the bucket as much, get some of that material loose with your um, backhoe and then be able to move it with the, the bucket. So I do think that's the advantage of it. Now, is it worth it if you don't have a whole bunch of projects and you're only going to use it occasionally or you can't think about projects? Probably not. But um, if you've got a fair amount of acreage and or uh, you've got a lot of projects that you're planning to do, um, some trenching or something like that, this thing is, uh, I think, really valuable. And the best part about it is after this, I was not tired at all. And uh, if I had dug that hole or tried to get that stump out uh, with hand tools, it would have taken me forever. I just would have given up. And here we go. In about 15 minutes, that stump is completely removed. So uh, now we're going to go into some more specifics with the tractor. So let's take a look at some of the features and the controls of the uh, TYM BH150 backhoe. Uh, as you saw me before, I use these outriggers. You've got uh, two levers here. You put the outriggers down uh, on each side with either one of these levers. You've got to have the tractor on to be able to do that. Um, in order to operate the hydraulics, but I've got it off right now so you can hear me while I'm talking. Here you can see, uh, you know, all the symbols. It shows you the outriggers right there. It shows you what this lever does. So you've got the bunch bucket function here, and then this is for that last joint. So up and down controls that last joint, and then uh, left right controls the curl of the bucket here. Then you've got the... Uh, main arm right here so uh you can go up or down with that main arm uh by pushing this lever up or down and then uh, you can go side to side with the uh main arm of the backhoe by moving this side to side so yes it probably looks a little bit funny me being on this seat i am uh six foot five and uh, over 200 pounds but uh I'm able to work on this seat and sit on this seat. Would I want to sit on it for eight hours a day? Probably not. However, I do fit. It's not that big of a deal. I just put my uh, feet out to the sides here. I've seen guys adjust the seat, but uh, overall the seat is comfortable. It's just you've got uh, limited space. But for me, I just kind of straddle it uh, and put my feet out here on these steps. No big deal. Now this is operated uh, with uh, two cables here on the back or two hoses uh, that complete the hydraulic loop. So when you've got the backhoe on, you've got to have these two uh, hoses connected to the backhoe. And when you take the backhoe off, you just uh, connect these hoses here together and you need that in order to complete the hydraulic loop for your tractor hydraulics to function. So not a big deal right there, but uh, that is how it works. So when you've got the backhoe on, those hydraulics are connected. When you got the backhoe off, you connect those hydraulics together. Here you can see how it's connected. We've got our top link right here, and that goes to a point right behind the seat. And then down below, you've got the backhoe frame, which is right here. And this backhoe frame uh, connects to two points on the back right here. So there's uh, 
two little studs, one on each side of kind of where the PTO comes out. Um, you've got these two studs. There's one on the other side as well. And then it uh, links in underneath the tractor. So we'll show you that. This is the uh, underframe or subframe of where the uh, backhoe attaches to. So this physical piece right here, this is part of the backhoe. And then um, this is tractor frame. And then you've got uh, how it links up uh, right here. So it's hard to show you, but uh, it's pretty easy to put this on and off. It just takes a little bit of time. You've got uh, these two bolts. There's a bolt right here and one right here. And uh, these basically hold that into the subframe of the tractor. Nice and secure, very beefy. Um, haven't had any issues with it. It feels like it's all one piece when the backhoe is together on the tractor. We'll just do a little bit of a walk around and give you some different views of the uh, TYM BH150 backhoe. Um, so what you've got here, this is a swing lock like for transport. Um, you can put a pin through there and then it prevents it from swinging. Make sure you take that pin out before you use it. You've got uh, some rubber bumpers here for when you're swinging the uh, arm side to side so that you don't hit the metal too much. Those have seemed to work pretty well and held up pretty good. Now you've got all kinds of zerks on here. Uh, maintaining your equipment, that's important. Make sure you grease these zerks up. So you got one here, here. Pretty much anywhere you've got a pivot point, you've got all kinds of zerks uh, to grease up. You've got one right there. So what I recommend is uh, you get a uh, battery powered operated grease gun. That's what I got um, to grease all these things up. It's gonna make your life way easier and way easier to maintain a piece of equipment like this. The tractor's got zerks on it. The loader arm's got zerks on it. You're gonna use it and then you can make sure everything is well lubricated um, and that stuff is gonna last a long time. So important stuff to note and uh, good stuff to have. So if we walk around here, um, you do have a pre-mounted uh, kind of hole thing here and that's for if you wanna put a thumb on it. It's a mechanical thumb. I think there's people that have some kind of hydraulic thumb but uh, I don't have a hydraulic thumb. Uh, but you can order a mechanical thumb so that's nice. Then you got your bucket here um, and how that mounts on there. I think I've got a 16 inch bucket. You can see my teeth uh, on there. Those just bolt on, no big deal there. You've got all kinds of hydraulic hoses. Anywhere you've got a cylinder runs to a hydraulic hose. And then uh, down here, you might've seen it when I was uh, taking the tractor or getting it started up. Um, you've got a pin that goes through here. So I put that in uh, when I'm moving this thing around. Um, so that uh, this is not flopping around when you go over uh, hills or bumps and everything like that. Now, one thing to note, uh, when you do have the backhoe on, you are going to have less ground clearance because this sits lower than the tractor. So just something to note, and it sits out uh, further behind the tractor. So if you're going over a lot of uneven hills, um, you might end up scraping stuff on the bottom. Uh, if you've got dirt, really not that big of a deal, but just something to note and be aware of. Another thing that you should be aware of before you start this tractor up with the backhoe and use it. And multiple people have done this and I'm lucky that I didn't do it because uh, I didn't have them hooked up because I was messing around with this right when I got it. But when you get this transported to you, you've got these two things here that uh, lock onto those uh, and can keep them from moving around um, when they're in transport. You want to make sure that you do not have those locked in place. Otherwise, you will shear those off the very first time that you lower uh, down your arms uh, for stabilization. So make sure that you uh, get those out of the way before you lower these down. Super easy to do, especially the very first time that you get one of these because that's just what happens. You want to get uh, going with it. So a couple other things. It does have an orange triangle on there. Uh, for going down the road and then you can see uh, how this kind of mounts onto the uh, TYM 2515H. So the uh, H means it's hydrostatic. I haven't had any issues uh, with the horsepower running this. It's got uh, plenty of power with the backhoe hooked up or the backhoe removed. Well right now the days are pretty short and we're running out of daylight here to film so just going to give you some of my thoughts on the uh, TYM BH150 backhoe. You saw us dig up a stump right here. The stump was probably, I don't know, eight inches in diameter, but it had some roots that were 
probably five to six inches in diameter as we were digging it up, which were pretty hard to get out, but we got it out. I was probably digging for, uh, I don't know, 15 minutes. I am not uh, an expert operator or anything like that. I'm just a guy that's testing out the backhoe on the tractor here. And uh, it did a great job removing that stump, removing the roots. We've got a hole here still. It'd be way easier to just uh, push all the dirt back in with the loader. But right now we've got pallet forks on it. So we'll just come back with the loader uh, when it's gonna be light out and just push all this dirt back in, no big deal. Um, plenty of power on this. You can see this thing can lift up the tractor uh, with the amount of force it has if you put it down without any kind of issues. Uh, I do like the size of bucket. That 16 inch bucket seems to be the way to go. I never feel like it doesn't have enough power really. Um, you can obviously turn up the RPMs on the tractor. So I was running the RPMs. First, I just let it sit in idle and uh, see how it was going with uh, just in idle. And then I turned up the uh, RPMs on the tractor like 1500 or something. And that seems to be a good balance of uh, RPMs and the power that you need and uh, no issues taking out the stump there. So is this going to be as effective as a mini excavator? No, but is it going to be available uh, if you get it with your tractor and uh, want to use it to take out a stump in 15 minutes or a half hour without having to rent a mini excavator? And uh, that's what's nice. It's going to be available when you need it to do a job here and there whether it be takeout stumps. Um, you could definitely dig a septic tank or a septic field with this uh, for your personal residence. Or if you wanted one piece of equipment um, and had a smaller business um, and needed to dig some holes, uh, it's nice to be able to have this and then the tractor and the loader and you can get a lot done. It's just like now, I, I dug the hole. If I had the loader on there instead of the forks, I would have pushed all this back in in uh, a minute or two with the loader and uh, you'd have a nice flat level surface. So I think that that's the benefit of this. There's always gonna be um, projects where you're gonna need a bigger machine. There's always gonna be projects where you diff need a different machine. But what's nice is that uh, having a backhoe available gives you a lot of versatility um, to get some of those projects done. Maybe not as fast as possible, maybe not as efficiently as possible, and uh, maybe it's not perfect uh, for everything. You might have to plan your workout a little bit better. Like if you're digging a trench or digging a, a hole, how you want to approach it. Um, but when you've got it with the tractor, I think one of the advantages is that you don't have to maintain two engines. You're just maintaining one engine and then hydraulics and grease. So the hydraulics, you know, you just got to maintain your hoses. You've got to grease up the points on here. And you just got to be careful and not uh, wear stuff out on your equipment or be comfortable with replacing that stuff when it wears out. Versus, let's say you've got a mini X, but you don't use it that much. And you've got a skid steer or you've got a mini X and a tractor. You've got two pieces of equipment and everything associated with that. Two engines to maintain. Versus here, you've only got one engine to maintain. And then uh, you've just got pretty simple stuff, hydraulic hoses. Um, in cylinders and uh, seals and, and zerk fittings to maintain. So I do think that's an advantage when you can simplify the number of engines that you maintain. As time goes on, I tend to think with mechanical things, the fewer engine components and fewer things that you can have that break, um, the less time you're gonna spend fixing them. And that's nice, you can spend that time doing whatever you want. So having fewer engines to maintain, I like the thought process behind that rather than having separate pieces of equipment. Now, it's not gonna do everything you want, but in my case, it does 95% of the things that uh, I wanna do. Dig up a stump here, I wanna take uh, some other little trees and I wanna relocate them so I can dig a hole, pull, pull those trees out with the uh, backhoe, dig another hole, put the trees in there. You can put fence posts in. Um, I dug probably uh, three feet getting that stump out and uh, it was easy. I just was playing with the controls on there like a video game versus if you're digging it with hand, it's going to take you a while and uh, you're probably going to get worn out after you dig a couple of those holes. And uh, sitting on the tractor, I was nice and dry. I am not dirty at all, which is nice. And I was able to accomplish that while uh, I didn't spend too much energy other than the mental energy on uh, running the controls, which in reality is probably more restorative than 90% uh, of the other stuff uh, that you do. 
it just feels good it's like playing a, a video game so overall been very impressed with it so far i think that there's a lot of applications and uh things that you could use it for and you could figure out stuff to do and uh, just like taking a stump out here um, i've rented stump grinders in the past and that's going to be the fastest way to get rid of a stump if you can get a uh, stump grinder mounted on tracks uh, with hydraulically driven head that thing's going to tear through stumps so fast it's going to take you like five minutes um, even for big stumps but uh, you got to go rent the grinder you got to get it set up bring it here and it's great if you're going to do uh, 50 stumps in a day that's what you want to use something that's got the production to uh, get all those stumps but if you've got just a uh, half hour 15 minutes and you want to go do a little project uh, around your property um, having a backhoe to be able to go for 15 or 30 minutes take one stump out and then uh, call it a night and do whatever else you got to do in your life that's really convenient and I think uh, that's something that uh, has a lot of value to it so I think if you are considering a backhoe for your tractor it really comes down to do you have projects to use this for or do you have projects that you think you'll use it for and kind of do the calculation on that because uh, in my experience, this TYM BH150 backhoe uh, is more than capable to get most jobs and most projects uh, that I would have done. Like I said, it's not going to be as fast as a uh, mini excavator or an excavator, but it's convenient. It's convenient to take on and off, um, and then you don't have two engines. So I don't think it's so much about the backhoe as it is your use case and uh projects you can think about and projects you can be creative with to think about to uh, use uh, your backhoe. So it's not going to do everything. It's not going to do it faster than everything else. It's not faster or more efficient than a stump grinder, but rather than needing to go rent a stump grinder, it does uh, get this job done here to uh, take the stump out. So it'll get the job done for most things. And I think that's really the utility in it is the ability to do multiple things and then once you start thinking about it you can come up with all these different projects like setting a post uh, digging up a post digging up a tree digging up a stump planting a tree uh, grading out an uneven piece of land um, cutting the side of a hill for whatever you need to do uh, putting in a small foundation on maybe a house or a foundation for a barn or a shop or a pole barn uh, digging some posts for that pole barn, helping you set the posts. Um, you could definitely uh, probably figure out a way to uh, help use that uh, backhoe to set posts. Reaching things, knocking stuff over. Um, there's a lot of different things um, that you can use a backhoe for. So I think it really comes down to what projects do you have to use for the backhoe um, or what could you think about to use the backhoe because uh, the backhoe has been reliable. So in my experience, I've been uh, satisfied testing out uh, this backhoe. It's worked good for me. Um, also happy with the uh, TYM2515H tractor. A lot of people always ask the question about this particular tractor is if it does have enough horsepower um, to go up hills to move things around. It's only got uh, 25 horsepower. However, um, it's got a really pretty stout frame on it. Um, that a lot of the larger tractors actually have in this similar lineup. And uh, what I found is that it's got plenty of power with the uh, gearing ratios to get you up and down hills, um, to dig, to move stuff around. This particular tractor, the 2515H, I think can lift like 2,200 pounds at the loader. Um, and then you've got a pretty uh, high lift weight also at the uh, three-point hitch. I run a five-foot brush hog on this tractor without any issues and uh, have used it on fields. But the primary thing that I've used the brush hog for is uh, clearing brush with saplings, uh, poplars that are anywhere between an inch to two and a half, maybe even some three inch ones in there. And uh, the brush hog with this tractor, uh, with the PTO eats right through it with that 25 horsepower. So that's uh, been a real advantage. The other thing about this with the 25 horsepower is that is under the uh, missions threshold. So it is a clean burning, uh, tractor very efficient uh, doesn't use uh, much fuel at all when you're operating it 
but it doesn't require any kind of def fluid uh, or any other type of emissions controls like a, a DPF filter on it. So that is nice uh, in terms of maintenance on this. You don't have to worry about uh, getting DEF fluid uh, for the diesel or a, a DPF filter or a particulate filter uh, that could clog up over time. So with that 25 horsepower, um, typically under that, uh, you don't have to have uh, some of the more stringent emissions controls uh, that you have to have on a higher horsepower tractor. And uh, just in terms of maintenance, uh, can reduce kind of what you've got to do in maintenance down the road um, with this particular thing. And that's just something to look at at any piece of equipment that you buy anymore is uh, what's the maintenance cost down the road and what um, are you going to be using it for. So in summary, uh, my experience with the TYM uh, BH150 backhoe has been positive. Uh, it's been easy to use, it's been reliable. It's had uh, plenty of power to do the jobs that I needed to do. And uh, this will fit on the TYM 2515 series uh, tractors. And I believe there's several different tractors uh, that this will fit on in the same series and in the TYM lineup. And I believe it fits on uh, some Branson tractors as well so uh, i'll put that down in the description below or in the comments check down there for what tractors this will also fit on but uh, overall i've had a positive experience with this and uh been great testing it out and uh, it's worked well for me so thanks for watching and uh we'll see you next time